I'm Bill Weiss and host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. My guest today is Abby Prinz. Uh, she's a graduate student at the University of Minnesota working on her PhD and she's about halfway through her project. Um, part of her project is with um, computer or, or precision technology with robot milking, but in this podcast or this Black Belt, we want to talk a bit about calves. She's worked on some large calf ranches and uh, so she's, she's quite knowledgeable in both dairy calf health and dairy calf management. Uh, Abby, why don't you give us a brief background of, of your, your background in calves, please? Sure. So on the few different farms that I've worked with, with calves, it was part of my role to oversee calves aged about three days to 25 days. So any dairy producer would know this is a very, very viable time in a calf's life prior to the first 24 hours of being able to feed colostrum and make sure that um, she's getting the proper management the first 24 hours of life. So this next set of three to 25 days, these calves, you see a lot of scours and a lot of pneumonia problems. And so being able to accurately and efficiently diagnose these health issues is extremely important so that you can I guess, reduce the risk of having chronic cases and making sure that these animals are able to perform when they enter their lactation two years from now. So when you get these new calves, they've been, they should have been given colostrum. Yes. Um, I'm, so is, is there some vaccinations they come in with, or is that something you're responsible for once they get to, or were you were responsible for? So that was part of my responsibility around I think 25 days that we gave a vaccine for any kind of respiratory illness. And then we gave another around 45 days and then at 90 days when they were getting to ready to leave our facility. So what are some ideas, you know, when these calves come in at three days of age, they're you know, very susceptible to everything. Mm -hmm. What are some good management or nutrition practices to ease the transition and reduce the the prevalence of respiratory and, and digestive upsets? That is a great question. So I fully believe that sanitation and cleanliness are above all else, that the hutch or the pen that the calf is staying in needs to be disinfected prior to her entering it, making sure that she's always got clean bedding, that it's not growing an excessive amount of bacteria. If she's sick, move her to a new pen. This also goes for any kind of feeding tool. So if she's being fed out of a bucket or out of a bottle with a nipple, that either one of those items is getting cleaned after every single use, again, to reduce bacteria growth. Because if that milk stays in the bottle or in the bucket for too long, milk is a fantastic medium for okay. bacteria growth. So being able to make sure that those items are cleaned prior to the next use is a great way to be able to prevent any kind of sickness and being able to diagnose early. If you diagnose a calf when she is severely scouring or she's got diarrhea that's basically water, you've caught it too late at that point. It's very hard for her to be able to recover. So cleanliness and then catching disease early and or preventing it are, I, say, I would say the three key things to preventing sickness and managing your calves very well. What would be to get, get get these diagnoses very early? What would be some things you look for then at, at the very early stage before they, they actually are sick or clinically sick, I should say? Okay, so especially for the calves, we find that scours happens usually between six and eight days, sometimes seven to 10 days of age. And so some really easy ways that I would be able to diagnose scours would be, first you would check the nose temperature. If you put your hand against their muzzle, if it's cold, definitely she's going to be sick. Also a thermometer checking temperature or body internal temperature, anything above 103 was, Okay, she's definitely on the list to go back and check again. Eyeball recession to check um, dehydration percentage, that if the eyeball is really sunken in or very recessed into the skull, she's really dehydrated, she's likely going to have scours if she hasn't presented that already. And then doing a skin tent test on the neck to be able to lift up the skin and see how long it takes for the skin to go back to the body to check elasticity. And then that will determine dehydration percentage. So checking all of those things will show you um, whether the calf is sick or not. When 
you have as many calves as I did that I was watching over, it's very hard to do that kind of individual physical exam for all of them. So driving through all of these calves and watching how fast they're drinking, how eager they are to be able to go up to the bottle to drink, those were also very key signs that if you have a freshly delivered bottle and the calf is laying down in the hutch and not wanting to move, then she's definitely sick and needs immediate attention. What What would be, um, is there any, to, again, to get when you these calves first come in, is there any different nutritional protocols you use, like adapting them to the, the replacer or anything special on, on nutrition? Not necessarily. All those calves were required to get one gallon of colostrum within two hours of life, which I believe is very much a gold standard, especially set by the Dairy Calf and Heifer Association. So as soon as they're given colostrum after that, they are immediately placed on milk replacer. And that was a fairly easy transition. They were always fed out of a bottle. And um, as they got older, they were fed or at least the calves that I was in charge of, they were fed two, two quarts twice a day. And then once they got up to about 20 days of age, they were fed about three quarts twice a day. Um, but this will definitely depend on producers. Some of them will try to feed a gallon at each feeding. And this has shown in quite a few studies that calves perform very well when they're given more milk and especially a stronger nutritional profile. So making sure that you have the right percentage of fat and protein, that you have the right amount of water mixed in with a milk replacer is extremely important. So being able to watch for those things and providing a really strong nutritional or I guess very well balanced diet will ensure that the calf will have a great performance throughout her life. And did you set or the, your employer set goals for say growth rates when you got them or how did you know if you're doing a good job, I should say. I'm sure yeah. you did, but is there certain <laughs> metrics you evaluated? Yeah, so we measured mortality, morbidity, and then average daily gain when the calf was ready to leave our facility. So morbidity and mortality across the entire or all, all ages of calves that we were looking over. And we were under 5% in both of those areas for morbidity and mortality, which was huge. And... With regards to average daily gain, that was something we did at the end where we weighed all of the calves together and then just did an average daily gain based off of the group and then applied that to the individuals. And so that was very important for us was to make sure that we had a great average daily gain. Other producers with smaller facilities can do more frequent weighing measurements, but because the facilities I was on were so large, it was just easier to do groups at a time when they were getting ready to leave. Adesale, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M. Visit MilkPay.com to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids. And to learn how Smart Amine M is the product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, component levels, and the lifetime performance of their herds. Did you, did you have or do you know, was there a certain growth rate you were looking at or... Ooh, off the top of my head, I don't remember. Okay, but it was evaluated, and and the, yes. the, at least the, the the manager had a a benchmark. Yes, yes. Is, is there any other thing to wrap up here on on your cleanliness at all? Is is critical? Anything else that is really really important on on good calf health and good calf management? I'd say cleanliness, comfort, and efficiency and prevention. If you can do all of those things, where Everything is clean, the calves are comfortable, and you're efficient with all of your diagnoses and checking your calves and you're preventing that sickness, you're going to have great calf performance. And then just one last quick question. Were these calves individually housed or now there's more and more on dual housing and group housing? How, how were the calves managed at the facilities you worked So with? they were housed individually just because we had we had thousands and thousands of animals yeah. so it was much easier to do them individually um, but it is becoming a little bit more common to see either paired or group housing so we'll see how that goes in the future what the industry decides to do but we might we might have you back on to talk about that <laughs> but uh, thank you very much this has been interesting thank you